Hello and welcome back to Risk of Rain 2, our fresh playthrough. Hello and welcome back to Risk of Rain 2 with our fresh save playthrough. Today we are going to be jumping into Monsoon with Mercenary. He is one of my favorite characters in Risk of Rain Returns and one of my favorite characters in Risk of Rain 2. Unsurprisingly, a dude with a sword in a shooty shooty game being one of my favorite characters. But in this game, he is even more mobile. His eviscerate ca causing a dash before beforehand and having a really cool little dash attack. But like usual, uh, you actually have to hit the dash attack in order to get the, the charges of it. He also has a status event that he can apply called Exposed um, that makes an enemy take a bunch more damage. I believe it's applied with his auto attack, if I remember correctly. We're going to just kill a few people right right here at the beginning. And then we are going to immediately head towards... Ooh. It's a bleed printer. Hmm. Ah, uh, but there's a focus crystal here. Focus crystal is quite good for him, as you can imagine, because people are almost always going to be within the range. You can always tell when the focus crystal is effective, too, because the numbers turn this kind of, like, pinkish color. I have definitely been enjoying my return to Restoring 2. Uh, yeah. If we get a scrap run, we'll probably get rid of that monster tooth there. It's been a lot of fun to come back to this game. I, uh, I was pretty surprised, to be honest, because, you know, I, I've played a lot of this game. I've probably played more of this than I have of uh, Restoring 1, including Returns. Uh, so I was kind of surprised that it felt so fresh after playing, you know, a hundred hours and in in two months of, uh, of, uh, Risk Remain Returns. But it really does feel quite fresh, and one of the things that I'm looking forward to with this game is that, uh, we also have mods eventually, and the mods still haven't come to Returns. I know that, uh, there is actually official word that there will be mods, for the record. Uh, the mod support is being worked on. But there's basically only one developer for Mr. Rain Returns right now. And adding mods is not the simplest thing in the world. What is that? Some radio scanner. I don't remember what that does. I'm going to go ahead and hit the teleporter, though. Oh, that's the other thing about... Um, mercenary and if you did not know is that he has a double dash or double jump as by default and his auto attack does make him or his primary attack does make him kind of float a little bit oh, i just got that achievement with no effort huh An ATG. Don't mind if I do. You also can hold left click to do his combo and also do right click at the same time or even sometimes dash and he will carry over part of his combo into the next move, which is pretty useful because the third hit of his combo applies exposed so you can like apply exposed to like that you can apply exposed to an enemy very very far away and if you time it right it's very hard to time though you can apply exposed to everyone along a dash unsurprisingly mercenary has quite a bit of movement tech and i freaking love it it is it is fantastic whenever a character has some, uh... Wow, seriously? Three rolls of penny? Excuse me, Dan. It's fantastic whenever a character has some... Some mastery available as part of their kit. Low skills, floor, high skill... 
Four rolls of penny. What the shit is going on right now? Like, that's just so improbable. I mean, I guess we got a missile launcher. The game thinks we're still in tutorial mode because I've only done one run since my return. We are just going to grab a few. You know, with so many rolls of penny and only one item that we have uh, rolls of pennies and only one item we care about, I think we're going to risk this because the only thing we actually really care about is um, our focus crystal there. I should. Uh, I'll probably be grabbing it sometime soon, but I'll be grabbing the better UI mods and stuff like that in order to uh, have items that show properly what's what they do instead of just saying, oh, it's 10% 10 to do this. The only reason I haven't grabbed any mods is because these first few episodes, I kind of want to show off what the new player experience would be like, right? This is, um, you know, obviously new players would not be as accustomed to this game and skilled, uh, but this is how you would see the game. After we have a few episodes, maybe four or five episodes, if it's still going well and not flubbing or failing on its own, uh, we will add in some mods. Probably just some quality of life things at first. But I am not afraid to add characters. Definitely stages. There's some pretty cool stages out there. And a lot of it I haven't actually seen before. Since we are already using the character that I wanted to obliterate with, all future runs will probably be ending with Providence. I don't see myself looping very often. Looping just takes a lot of time. And the only reason I would loop is if we were doing like weird builds or something like that. We also need to work on getting artifacts unlocked at some point. Because it'd be pretty... Oh yeah, there was a scanner thingy on the previous stage. I never got to see what that was. If anyone knows what that is, uh, remind me in chat. I... I the issue is that I have actually played this game before. It's just been a while. Uh, let's take the Cautious Slug. That'll give us at least some form of regeneration. Mostly out of combat regeneration, but... It's at least something. There is a little bit of a pacing to this character as well. I kind of ideally want to time my right click to be around the same time as the third swing of my left click because my right click does some of the most damage out of my kit. So I get the most value out of the extra damage from using its bows. Meanwhile... I suppose only lasts for one hit, so if I eviscerate on the expose. Ooh, behemoth! Okay. Um if I eviscerate on the expose, then it just doesn't add that much damage. Teleporter's off on my right. Brilliant behemoth on my second run is Man, I'm already having some pretty damn good runs here. Four knives and a behemoth? Yeah. I can win this. Basically, uh, my run to lose now, and, and if I flub anything. I'm just gonna go ahead and set off these rockets right now, and, uh... And hit the teleporter. We have a lot of money, so once the teleporter's done, we can check the stage. Oh yeah, there's a pretty cool mechanic I can do with this. Let's see. Nope, didn't quite do it right. So essentially, whenever I come out of my dash, there is a significant ooh. There's a significant amount of force I apply to things, and because this is a 3D game, there are some interesting mechanics with force. Let's see if I can get it this time. No, too close. I haven't done this in a long time, so I'm not really surprised that I'm failing at this. But essentially what I was trying to do, and he's already dead so I can't show it off, is that you can specifically against the Wandering Vagrants, and I think one or two other enemies, like the uh, the Uwu unit, um, sorry, the Alloy unit, <laughs> um, 
you can, since they're floating, you can shove them into the ground. And if you do it hard enough, you, they actually take damage. And there is such a way in order to do it so hard that they get instantly killed. Just a fancy thing about uh, games having visits and the consequences of putting visits in games. There's always consequences for putting visits in games. But I think it's this one is definitely an intentional consequence. They didn't have to make them take damage. We're going to check over here for items super fast. See, Sticky Bomb is okay. It's not the best item in the world. That is more rolls of pennies as a printer. What the hell? Uh, I think I'm just going to get rid of all these rolls of pennies, to be honest. One thing to keep in mind is scrappers will scrap an entire stack of something. So be aware of that. That is rolls of penny, right? Yeah. I will grab one back. Just for the money. Although I don't actually think I need it. Oh, there's another item right there. And we already saw the missile launcher, so I'm going to grab it something else. Ah, uh, Samurang. I'm fine with that. Samurang is a little bit less good in this game than it is in Mission Rain Returns, but it's still very good. The dif difference being that the Samurang is like, I mean, it's it's basically just pictures of it, it being a third 3D game. It's less easy to just hit hundreds of enemies with in this game. But yeah. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask is, uh, you know, for people's input, especially people who have been watching my Risk of Rain Return series or just know a lot about this game, you know, I I'd love to see some... Yeah, it just shoots at three little Samurangs. It's not quite as uh, insane or as intense. Uh, or for ideas for... Once we get through kind of like the base stuff here, because I am doing a uh, new... A new... Uh, Fresh save, after all. Once we get through the base stuff and get all the characters unlocked and everything, you know, what kind of challenges would you actually like to see? I have plenty of ideas, you know, probably can do a lot of repeat challenges from Mr. Rain Returns, but now with 3D and uh, with different item loadouts and stuff like that. Um, I love the idea of doing limited item loadouts like I did in Returns, because those were a lot of fun. And people seem to lo love the crap out of them, to be honest. In fact, I'm still getting requests for them to this day. Um, I say to this day, it's only been it's only been a little bit since my last Risk of Rain Returns video. And I wouldn't say that it's my last for the record either. I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a break comp compared to Risk of Rain 2. Because, well, a lot of people are probably burning out on it. And I was getting close. And I don't want to actually burn out on it. So if I actually burn out on it, then I'm... Less likely to come back in the future. Benthid Bloom. No, thank you. I don't... I don't... Benthid Bloom is a whole thing. We'll talk about Benthid Bloom whenever I actually take it in the future. I'm sure someone in the comments is probably going to tell everyone what it does anyways. It's... It's a mess. It... It's not an item that synergizes with any build ever. It's just... Here, let's turn your build into chaos. It is a build all on its own, I guess, is what I'm saying. I could give that guy my equipment. In fact, I think I might just do that. So this is an equipment drone. He'll take my saws and he'll use them for me. But it also means that I get to... I'll take the watch. I get to, to use some my saw. Another roll. What is going on? Why do you want me to have rolls of pennies, game? That's so weird. Teleporter's over here. We'll grab this and then head up to it. What the hell? Did I, like, find some secret setting that just says rolls of pennies is the only item I care about? Grab another equipment. Ooh. Molotov. Hey, it's been a while since I've used the Molotov. I don't remember 100% what its activation looks like. Oh, yeah, it just lights shit on fire. 
Uh, Zy Construct. You're so hard on some, some bosses, on some characters, I mean. And so incredibly easy on Mercenary. He puts up this big impenetrable shield and you have to wait it out and stuff like that. Nah. Mercenary, you just jump on top of him. Leptin Daisy is not the best of items. But it'll take it. Basically, what Leptin Daisy does is uh, it attaches to your teleporter. And uh, oh, I missed him. And every so many pulses, I think it's like four pulses. It doesn't tell me. Four pulses per teleporter event, it'll heal you. And I believe you have to be within the teleporter circle for it to heal you whenever it pulses. But it does pulse based off the percentage of the teleporter, so it's very likely that you'll be in the teleporter event. But it's just, it's so unreliable when it happens that it's just not worth it. They actually added an item to returns uh, called the Moo Construct that uh, is basically just a better version of it because I think they realized that Left in days, just trying to just bad item. Oh, you can really chuck that Molotov. Hot damn. That's pretty fun. Makes me think about a fire only build at some point. That's pretty cool. Definitely going to be doing, once I get command, some themed builds. Probably sooner than later, to be honest, because those were a lot of fun. And they can be a lot flashier in this game, too. And the flashiness helps. I need some movement speed. Base mercenary. Despite looking very cool. This whole reverse grip and everything like that. Not very fast. Not very fast. I actually like my Molotov. Might not be the best use item in the world, but it's fun. I mean, look at that. Let's see what we got here. It is uh, stage four, so we are guaranteed to get green items in our pick threes. So this is definitely one of the stages where we want to uh, make sure we full loot. Don't want to be below you. Oh, pushed into the st stage for a moment there. I was very worried that I was going to get sent to the freaking void. Hey, that was a lot of death. We survived in the end. Let's see. Leeching Seed, Leeching Seed, or Hope of Feather. Well, we already have a double jump, so let's take the Leeching Seed. Yep, up and deep. I don't know if you saw it there, but we did just send that man into oblivion, which is what I was talking about earlier with being able to uh, kind of yeet people with our attack. We'll take a void item. Get rid of the little void guy. We just did 5,000 damage in a shot. Sure, okay. I'll believe you. Yeah, because we can do it to all flying enemies. The uh, mercenary yeet. It's also a gold guaranteed gold item on this stage. But, sorry, gold chest, which will drop a guaranteed red. But I will admit, I don't know how, how, how much I care. Red items are not quite built the same as they are in uh, Returns. They're not 
the top tier items in this game, I would argue. A lot of the top tier items are actually in white and uh, green. Most white items scale linearly, which makes them very, very good to stack. Is that another equipment drone? No, it's an incinerator drone. I think we're good. Teleporter should be on my left somewhere. I hear the music. There it is. Put down a whole bunch of fire and walk away. Actually, am I remembering wrong? Is, uh... Is it supposed not extra damage and instead cooldown reduction? I'll have to check that here in a second. Uh, death mark is okay. Basically, what death mark says is um, if I get a certain number of status effects on on someone, I think it's uh, four more. Yeah, it won't tell me what it's supposed does during the match. I'll have to check it out between matches. But yeah, Death Mark, if I get if I get four or more Sazvets onto an enemy, they suddenly take massive damage, which is very good. That damage does uh, scale as well with more Death Marks, if I'm, if I'm uh, mistaken. Again, doesn't tell me. Better UI might happen sooner than later. The issue is that uh, we both basically need most of the satisfets in the game in order to activate it. I think we have enough money for the gold chest, so I mean, might as well. Gold chest is always under this little bridge here. Oh, we have more than enough. Guess the rolls of pennies is doing something for us after all. Laser stroke. Critical hits do an additional 100% damage. It'd be nice if we did any crit chance. We also have a Gore's Tome, which is what is dropping those little gold nuggets sometimes when enemies die. That's n definitely helping with our uh, economy. Speaking of Gore's Tome, I guess. I think it's supposed does both cooldown reduction and damage. Which I'm pretty damn sure it does extra damage. Uh, remote caffeinator. I mean, remote caffeinator is just too funny to not grab. Basically, what it does is it drops down a Nuka Cola machine. Or sorry, Coca Cola machine. Sorry, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can activate it to get a healing. But it counts as an activated item. And uh, there's some items that activate off of activated items. So, then the. It's actually the one equipment item I wish they had added to Restore Main Returns because it would have allowed us to do some pretty silly fireworks builds, some pretty silly, you know, um, there was like this extra supply item that got added to Restore Main Returns that activates off of activatables. Um, that would have been really nice. Yeah. We could have done some silly things if we had a re remote caffeinator in, in Returns. It's definitely extra damage. Definitely extra damage. It's just also cooldown, maybe? I don't remember. I'm sure someone in the comments has already said something and corrected someone, so if you're at this point in the video and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, probably just check the comments. Oh, I missed them with the exposed charge, so... Oh. I think the only thing to mention with the caffeinator that's a little interesting is that it takes money to activate it. Because, I mean, sodas aren't free. Right? Ooh, Shattering Justice. Shattering Justice does the same thing, but a little bit better in this game. And uh, it's very good on Mercenary. Basically, every time I hit an enemy, I lower the defense up to a maximum. 
And it only takes four or five hits to get the maximum stacks of Shatter and Justice. And I believe it counts as a status effect. Which means death mark. We're one step closer. Just gonna head and uh, brute force that guy down. Teleporter is off to my right somewhere. God, I love the movement. Love the movement on this character. What are these? I don't remember. Oh, that's the Infrested Lockbox. That's right. Um, Let's take that. I don't remember what it does. Adds a special charge of your special skill. Oh, that's your eviscerates. Hell yeah. And then it converts all... Encrusted keys. Or sorry, it converts all energy cells, which I just unlocked energy cells, so I don't have any. I don't think they'll be available during this run. It's technically possible to get extra lysate cells, though. But with some cooldown reduction um, coming from some of my items, I do... Another roll of pennies. What the hell is happening? Anyways, uh, be, with some cooldown reduction coming from my other items and from my character's base kits, I am going to have Eviscerate basically all the time now. Surprised we haven't seen the Lunar Coin. That's really... Oh, I guess we have. We have five. Did the game just give us five or did we, did we find five and I just didn't notice? No, it's not possible I didn't notice because um, you have to activate to pick them up. And I was going to mention them whenever, whenever we found one. So we actually just have not found a Lunar Coin. Which is strange because the Lunar Coins are actually designed in such a way that um, they're more common until you found one in a run. So you're almost guaranteed to find one in each run. Almost, I say. I really do say almost because I have plenty of times not found one. But we're officially ru two runs deep now, so not finding one at this point is actually weird. We're going to print one more of these, because Topazes are pretty damn good in this game. You get three or four Topazes, and you can feel pretty indestructible. I have not been listening for it, and I've lost track of the teleporter. The Shrine of the Mountain, though. Go ahead and activate this. I think it's above me somewhere. I need to get some high ground so I can maybe see the particles. This music has a horn instrument in it, and uh, I'm not hearing it over that. There it is. I finally see it. Honestly, probably should just go activate the teleporter. Ooh, another Topaz approach. And we are going to be leaving it on its default mode and going to the last stage. And there are ways to skip huge elements of this last stage, and I am very aware of them for anyone in the community who is looking to give me advice. But we will not be doing it this first time. We are going to call down the remote caffeinator, though, because I'm taking a lot of damage. We're actually going to use the remote caffeinator for what it's meant for. Healing me. And we got some kills. We have a ton of shields going on from our topazes. So we're not really in danger anymore. And this is why I love this character. I have not touched the ground since I started this boss fight. It's full on like Devil May Cry level shit there.
fantastic. Looks like we got Chrono Bubbles. Not the worst thing in the world. Not the best either. We missed one item. We'll probably miss more than that. But we missed one item right at the end there. And this... is commencement. Okay. Welcome back. We sort of made a mistake. But because of that mistake, we are going to be giving you a bit of extra footage. In the background, you should be seeing a montage of a new mercenary run. I got a few different items, but for the most part, it went pretty well. What happened to our last run is that I paused the footage to turn up the volume so that you guys could hear the really awesome music for the moon, and then I never unpaused the footage and I ended up dying on this stage. So now we're back on the final stage of Risker Ring 2 with Mercenary again. You guys got to see us die if we die here this time. Unfortunately, with the other one, I pause it and then I never realized that I had left it on pause until I was already dead. One of the things that I mentioned in the other recording that you guys never heard is that um, there are ways to skip the mechanics for this final stage. I won't be showing it off today because, again, I kind of want to uh, focus on the original intended paths for now. That's why we're also not modding or anything right away as well. So instead of activating a teleporter, we have to find a way to release the rescued ship. And if you were paying attention to the top right, it actually like crossed off the find the teleporter objective and did that instead. So we're going to trudge through the rain on the moon here because we are on the moon. That's Petrichor off in the distance there. Petrichor 5. Uh, fighting against perfected enemies made by Providence's twin brother, Mithrix. These chimeras can be quite dangerous, so you do need to be careful. We're going to just send them off into the oblivion with our use item there. We do also have an item right now that allows us to deal damage to everything around us just by running. So we have a little bit of a like a sprint build, which is good because you pretty much want to sprint all the time. So normally we could find various ways what is called a pillar skip, which is the ability to skip these pillars, which I'm about to show you right now. There's a bunch of different kinds. Um, but basically, like for example, this is a pillar of soul. It's going to create an area like a teleporter that will get smaller and smaller until we until it counts down completely. But unlike a normal teleporter, instead of summoning enemies, we basically just have to defend here for a few moments. The enemies on the moon are quite strong, so be careful. This place can be quite deadly, even with a good build. Like that, for example. I don't have a good build, and it is quite deadly. Unfortunately, the soul pillars count back up if you walk away from them. Little bit of a teaser there. Reference. Reverse Rain 1. Okay, we're going to head back in here. Thank you guys so much, especially a mercenary. I think I'm going to chuck a use over here. If anything does show up, it'll kind of just yeet it off the side there. Oh, it messed up. Instead of yeeting it off the side, it's all just sucking it into the center there. I mean, it's the not the worst thing in the world. 
these pillars suck so bad. There's a reason that people skip them. Not only for the time. It's not really the whole reason. Because they also suck. And they could kill you very easily having to fight these pillars. We're just going to keep moving in a circle here. Wait for this to charge up. And we have to complete a certain number of these. We completed that pillar of soul. There's going to be more pillars. You can see them as beacons of light off in the distance there. The pillars, uh, the type of pillar, because there are multiple types, is determined on... That's a perfected enemy. That's not fantastic. Perfected enemies have basically their entire HP bar as a barrier and a ton of damage. But yeah, sorry, the um, the pillars have a different type depending on where they are. So since there's three of them over here, these are all going to be pillars of blood, which will damage me over time. Which really sucks. Fortunately, these don't count back down, though. So we can heal between. At least for now. The other nice thing is that uh, I currently have some barbed wire, which makes me do damage to everything around me whenever I take damage. to focus up for a second here. Unfortunately, we came here and we don't really have a ton of damage. I forgot that these things were so explosive. That went up to 45%. Fortunately, these things do tick up very quickly. I've been alive for 30 consecutive minutes, unlocking Dio's. Dio's will be useful. This is really not ideal. Oh, we got it. Honestly, just get out of here. Don't have enough damage for Mithrits, probably, so we're probably going to die. But we'll at least see how far we can get. We're going to head up there. To find... Potentially some more items, because there's some items that in these little vault thingies that spawn. Actually, no, this is not the right spot. Oh, I actually got all the pillars already. Good, 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 good. I didn't realize that I had. Here's the spot. It's been a hot minute since we've been back here. Let's see, this will get me an Aegis. I don't care about that. I need some damage if possible. What is that? Ukulele. Three white items for a ukulele. I'll happily take that. I think I might do three more white items. 
Uh, took some of my healing away, but I'll be fine. Now we need to find one of these vents. That will take us up to the boss fight. There's one over there. Looks like that is the closest one. And then we get to fight the final boss of Risk of Rain 2. The brother of Providence. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and... Fucking kidding me, mate? Well then, that's gone. Say hello to Mithrips. Honestly, generally speaking, pretty cool fight. Got a big hammer. We're in phase one. He's going to swing it at you. You heard me. Phase one. Try not to get hit by it, as you can tell. Does a lot of damage. We have very little damage, unfortunately. After he gets to certain health thresholds, he's going to jump. Come back to the center. Do a big shockwave thingy. There's phase one down, at least. The phase two is mostly a monster phase. Ow. 
This is my lack of movement speed that's uh, hurting me right now. We do have shurikens though, which puts a range attack on our auto attack. Chimera killed us. We were way too low on damage for that. We'll definitely come back with some more damage next time. Anyways, this has been Mr. Brain 2. This has been Mercenary. Sorry for the weird split episode, but if you have joined it anyways, feel free to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe, and I will definitely have more of this in the future. I hope you have enjoyed, and have a good day.